Hey, and welcome to Lifestyles of the Interesting and Infamous. I'm Jolene Maria, your host, and today we have our very first infamous guest. He owns an underground poker rig, so we had to shield his face, and you don't actually get to see what he looks like. But I'm going to give you an inside scoop on what his lifestyle is like. So, how did you get started? I started playing poker in 2002, and I was introduced to organized poker in 2005. So what's the difference between the two? Um, I was at home with friends, and then I was introduced to the environment where the house took a take, and, you know, people actually made money off of the game. How did you get intrigued by it? So you see a lot of money, and as a kid, you see a lot of money changing hands, and if you use a lot, you can get there. How old were you? Fifteen. Did you ever think that you would be in this profession when you were younger? Never. Never. I don't know what I wanted to do, but it definitely wasn't this. What's the craziest thing that you've seen people do? I don't know. I've been robbed at gunpoint three times. Been raided by the police, the police three times. Um, you know, I've seen prostitution at the poker table. I've seen all sorts of things. What's it like? Can you tell a story about it? I don't mean, know. It's a social setting. Like, I get in at 7 o'clock and I wait for people to show up. And basically, it's just a very loose environment. And... It's just a social club, long story short. Where does it happen? A basement of a hotel? No, we have properties in Manhattan, basically all apartments, and we also run out of bars. So on the outside, does it look like a legitimate business? Everything's in, like, either office space or personal space. How do the cops catch on, then, and how do they figure it out? Well, we advertise, and basically, there's a precinct right down the street, no matter where we are, because it's New York City, and... Basically, they just figured out we do advertise and we are in. We go to every bar and try to get in. Mm -hmm. Because basically, bars will figure out what we're doing and kick us out. Right. What's the difference between gambling illegally or doing it legally? There's no such thing as legitimately. What? It's illegal. It's always illegal? It's legal. Poker is legal. Yeah, but how come they have, like, the World Poker Tour and everything? Well, that's, it's legal to gamble in a casino. It's not legal for us to put a table in this room and take money off of it. Right, so all it really is is like, it's like people getting together and drinking and then pacing, like, placing bets and Precisely. wanting to win. What are the craziest repercussions you've seen? Um, I've seen a leg broken, over $40,000. That's the craziest. Have you ever seen anybody like, get killed yet? I've seen people stabbed. I never saw anybody get killed. I've seen guns. I've never seen anybody get shot. I know of someone that was shot and killed in the city, but I've never seen it myself. So, does that part scare you? Not really. I mean, I maintain a low key, and right now I run the business from these different miles away. Mm -hmm. You mean 3,000 miles away? Wherever it is that you are? Because nobody knows where he is. Do you ever feel really bad when you see people lose a lot of money? I don't feel bad because I have a big network, and basically most of them are all professionals with real jobs, and real lives and some of the professional poker players, but if they lose it, they usually have it to lose. Mm -hmm. So, is it like people with like families who, do you ever hear them, you know, the stereotypical like, I'm losing my house and my, my wife and kids are going to kill me? I've heard that and I know guys that leave their wives at 3 o'clock in the morning and don't tell them they're leaving and come in. Mm -hmm. Do you see them having like family issues because of it? Like... Not necessarily, because like I said, usually if they're losing their money, it's secretive. Right. How do they have that much money to lose? It's crazy. What's the most amount of money you've ever seen people lose? I've seen someone lose 120000 a day. What about one hand? Probably 30000 That's insane. It's insane. Does your mom know about it? My mom knows all about it. What does she have to say? My mom's known about it since the beginning when I was in Boston, and she supports it. My dad doesn't support what I do, but my mom is all for it. Why? Because does she see the money? She sees the money. <laughs> I paid off my parents' house. Has anybody ever beat the house before? The house doesn't get beat. It's impossible to beat the house. Literally impossible? How is that so? We take a take. Out of every hand that gets dealt out, we take money out of it. And unless it's one of my employees losing the money, the money can't be lost for the house. Mm -hmm. So, is it kind of like a fight club where only the people who know about it know when it happens? I mean, I guess we do advertise and we do promote at bars and basically we have people that go out and get people to come in. Mm -hmm. So, is it a secret? Yeah. I mean, we do just run in random commercial buildings, but 
you know, you have to get invited to be there. <laughs> so somebody tells you. So you really deal with people who have that much money and you know they have that much money? Yes. Right. So have you ever been arrested? I've never been arrested for, for gambling. I've been raided three times. I've been, you know, eight cops, television style, busting the door. What does that feel like? It feels horrible. Were you prepared for it? I was upstairs, it was two days before Christmas in 2006. I was upstairs, usually I would have someone going down. I was in an elevator building, and I went down, and a guy had called me that had played last night for the first time, called me, said he was coming in. Um, I went down and answered the door, and the first guy in the door put me in a chokehold and lifted me to the ceiling, said, don't move. What were the repercussions? Well, in that situation, that was the third time I was nailed in downtown Boston, and then I moved to New York City because of it. What was the first time you got in trouble with illegal gambling? The first time was a cop's kid lost a bunch of money, and he went home and told his dad there was a bunch of drugs in the place, and that he had just lost $2,000, and the next day, the police were at my door. So it's kind of like, um, you know, you're kind of... It's like a brothel almost, because you're dealing with all of that stuff. Like, it all comes together, right? Like, yeah. the prostitution, the drugs, like... It's all there. Everything? Everything's there. Hmm. You, know, you can get anything. Just, you know, where, where there's money, there's that kind of thing. Does it scare you, money attracts that stuff? It really doesn't scare me. I mean, like I said, I have seven places right now. If I lose one due to the territory I'm in, that's fine. And I'm looking to expand still. Is it like a gang thing? It's kind of like a gang thing. Do you deal with gangs ever? Not really. I mean, basically I have allies and like we make enough money that I can make it go around. Did you know what you were getting into when you first started this? Oh no, no idea. If seven years ago when I walked in that room I had no idea that I would be sitting where I am now. What's the difference between then and now? I just have so much of a better view of what goes on and I've grown. Like my whole business is networking. So it's like you walked in thinking like, oh, I'm just going to play some, some poker for some fun, and then all of a sudden it was like... Yeah, but what was the first inkling that you could actually make a good amount of money off it? Because, you know, people play poker all the time. I play poker, my whole family plays poker. Everybody loves poker. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, when did you realize you can make like hundreds of thousands of dollars off of it? I mean, this was during the poker room in 2005, and everyone was playing. Honestly, like we had three to four tables a night of people and I just knew that it was going to grow into something much bigger. What happens to people when they can't pay? Usually we don't extend credit, for the most part, but in circumstances where there are big games we try not to keep that much money in the room and the money will be dealt with on the next day, but you're not limited to, you know, having your legs broken or an arm, I've seen people stabbed over it. I mean, I guess it just depends on who's running the floor at the time to give you the credit. Mm -hmm. So it's a dangerous game, right? Well, I mean, sure. I, I do run games anywhere with blinds from $1, $2 to $10, $25. So some games are obviously more relaxed than others. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen anyone count cards? There's no such thing as counting cards in poker. Um, I've seen mechanic dealers. I've seen marked decks. I mean, there's decks that you need to wear glasses and contacts to see the markings on. There's some very sophisticated systems that people will use, but... The only people that really can cheat would be the people that work for me, the dealers. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have an issue with them? I've, I've had issues in the past and I fight people right on the spot. So it's more of a firing, but you know their name and they're like blacklisted pretty much? Or? Yeah, blacklisted from my circle. I don't run the only circle in, in what I am. How many gambling, how many illegal gambling circles would you say you're involved with? I mean, I have my own circle, but I'd say that there's probably three or four more circles in the city, and there's probably 30 or 40 more games. Is Las Vegas competition for you? Las Vegas isn't anything for me because poker is legal there. Poker is illegal in Manhattan. Are you worried about gambling becoming legal? I wouldn't be able to have a business in a place where all those casinos were. Right. Because people would just go to the casino. I'm saving people, you know, a three or four hour drive to come to my establishment. Do you win money when you play? Do I win money when I play? Yeah. Yeah, I've won a bunch of money. I broke 100000 for the first time at 16. What do you want to spend the money on? Right now I'm saving it. I want to have five kids. Do you have $5 million? Not yet. Because that's what they cost, a million dollars each. I know exactly what they cost. So where do you see your career going from this point on? I'm going to continue to grow. 
I mean, I have about 2,000 clients right now. Have you met any well-known poker stars? I have. I've met a lot of people. I've probably met just about all of them. You know, what about, so does prostitution help your business or does it, like, take away from it? It basically takes away from it because I need people to sit at my table. Yeah, so you're like, stop giving them sex. I want them to pay attention to their poker game. Yes. Are the girls good looking? Yeah, the girls are good looking. Does that, is that like weird for you, like, to be around that stuff? Are you like, oh, this is awesome, I get to see boobs all day? Well, not really. I mean, I don't know. I hire most of the women, so... So you're a pimp and a gambling ring connoisseur? Sure. Huh. So what is actually your role in this whole thing? Right now I just organize and I get the word out from this end and make sure that all the money's right because everything is in one person's name and I control the name. It's not my name, but... But is the name? It's the name of all the properties. So how come the cops can't figure out that if they bust one that they can bust all of them? Um, there's different task force for different parts of town and everywhere has a vice. And so as long as I'm in different sections, they don't speak to each other as strange as that might sound. Is gambling a high priority crime? It depends on the area. Right. Like I have a game in Harlem that they wouldn't even come close because it's just it's all Spanish speaking and it's just a different part of town where they're just not looking for that. Mm-hmm. Because it's more like drugs and like... Yeah, they're looking for drugs. Does it scare you that drugs are closely related to what you're doing? Well, for the most part, I won't allow any of that to go on inside the place itself. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not too worried about it. Right, so is it hard to keep up with that many employees? It's really not. I mean, I've... I was only... I built my place in New York off of a list that started in 2001 of players. My business partner came here to start in 2005. I met him and then we linked in. And went back to New York, started the first place, and then you meet people that see that you can fill the room, and then you expand. So, where are you going next? I'm just expanding in the city. You don't want to go outside of that state at all? I haven't really decided. I mean, they're looking to start in Stanford, Connecticut, but I don't know if I want to be involved. I feel like it could be a losing venture. Right, so it's the risk you're trying to weigh out your bet? Well, I'm almost ready to get out, so... Really? So it's like a quick make a lot of money and then you're done? Pretty much. I mean, I could stick around and I'm sure that the people that I work with will stick around, but like I said, I've already detached myself from up there anymore. What do you want to start doing next? Did you like start thinking about like going to school or anything like that? Definitely not going to school. Waste of money. Yeah, waste of money. <laughs> not worth what you put into it, right? No, it's really not. not even, that's my own opinion, of course. So you can be a millionaire without going to college? But, I mean, do you feel bad? Does it, like, morally, do you feel like it's wrong that you became a millionaire without having to go to school and without legitimately doing it and by doing it illegally? No, I mean, I put a lot of work in. I mean, I work, I work 10, 10, 12, 14 hour days from 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. for months and months and months. Like, I put in my work to get to where I am. Is your clientele usually middle class? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, basically just stable people with jobs and kids and all that stuff. It's not all dark, dark people. Mm -hmm. So how much longer do you think you're going to stay in the game? Three to five years, I think. And then you'll just be done and you'll do something else? Yep. Settle down, move to an island, something beautiful, who knows? Do you have any places in mind that you would want to go to and spend your money? I don't know yet. <laughs> I've always said you make her, but I'm, I'm getting weird. Why's that? I don't know. Bad things happen in Jamaica. I've heard. Arms get cut off and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, I don't want my arm to get cut off. That would suck. I mean, you wouldn't even be playing poker. They'd just cut your arms off. Not fair. So, what is your biggest worry with this career that you have going on? Well, go to jail. Is that really like a... A it's possibility? A, it's a legitimate mm -hmm. possibility, yeah. So how long do you think you would end up going to jail for? Anywhere from two to eight years. So do you think you could handle it? I know I can handle it and it will be worth it. My money's hidden and they're not going to find it. So you don't have to pay any taxes on your money? I've never paid a dime. Does the government think you're unemployed? I've just never gone to the IRS. So are you worried somebody will come and expose you with who you are and what you do? No, I mean, I have a tight knit group of friends and I really, really tell anybody what I actually do. So that's why they can't see what you look like or sound like. 
Correct. <laughs> Are you worried at all that you're on film right now? I'm worried, no. I mean, my business is based far away, and the pe people know what I do from around here, but I don't feel like I can get enough exposure to have someone rat me out. Right, drop the dime. I'm not going to, so don't worry. I hope not. What's the most expensive purchase you've made? Well, don't get me wrong, I've blown a whole bunch of money doing a lot of stupid things. What's the best place that you've been? I don't even know. I've been all over. I've never been out of the country besides the Canada, which doesn't really count. What have you been arrested for? Possession, distribution, all sorts of fun stuff. Think the cops are watching you? I don't think they're watching me. I don't think, they, like I said, I don't think they care enough. Right. Hmm. You're below the radar, huh? I'm below the radar. I'm too young. But when you get like 45, then they're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna arrest you for the fun of it. Usually they go to the oldest person in the room first. Really? Do you like New York or Boston better? Doesn't really matter. The bars are open later in New York. That's the only advantage you got? It's a pretty good advantage. Everything's open 24 hours, too. It's much better. It's better than our nice suburban life. How do you control things from far away? I just have trusted associates. How many people do you actually work with? Like partnerships? I only have, I have four partners and I have about 35 other employees. How do you pay them? Just in cash? Yep. Hmm. So they're just dealers, right? Just dealers? Or are you talking yeah. like, you know? Yeah, dealers. I mean, I have one person that holds the money. In each spot, I have one person for security. I have one, two, or three dealers, depending on the number of tables. And then we just have drinking massage girls. How much do the girls get paid? Like two to three hundred a night. How do you find people to work for you? Just go out. Just find them. People like money, they love it. Yeah. I wouldn't wish I wouldn't wish anyone being in my my predicament. Why is that? My place. I don't know. It's just not a place where I feel like everyone should be. I've taken a very unique road. Well yeah. I don't think that I know very many people who are running an underground gambling ring. Do people respect you even though you're young? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people hate me too. And, like, I'm a pretty big asshole when it comes to my business, and, you know, a lot of people hate me. Are you ever afraid somebody's going to shoot you? No. Well, I mean, nobody actually knows where I am. Yeah, but when, okay, what about when the people held the gun to the back of your head? What was that situation like, and what did that feel like? You're very powerless. I mean, it's, in the end, it's just money, so you just give it to them. So you basically got robbed for how much, though? I've been robbed for more than a hundred thousand dollars. That's awful. Did you find out their names and have them murdered? No. Hmm. What kind of repercussions did you have happen? None? Um, no, there were repercussions. I'd rather not discuss them. Are you affiliated with any of the Mafia? I know a bunch of people that do a lot of horrible, horrible things. So what's it like to know those people? No, they're really nice people. I mean... <laughs> they're really nice people who have people killed. It's fine. Yeah, they are. Interesting. You know, everybody that I'm in contact with is all, like, through a political family, so people treat you with a lot of respect as long as someone in the circle will introduce you to them. It's kind of like going to a party, and you can't go to that party unless you know somebody that's at the party. Yes. So thanks so much for staying tuned for this one and only infamous interview that we got from Lifestyles of the Interesting and Infamous for our season. I hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned because we're going to be making fried poker chips. So, here we are in the kitchen again of the lifestyles of the interesting and infamous. Today, we're going to be making potato poker chips for our friend, Undisclosed Name. So, all we're going to need today for this recipe is some potatoes, sweet potatoes, and vegetable oil. So, to prepare these, you're going to need a mandolin or a really sharp knife to get a really thin slice on these. How I'm going to do it, since I'm using a mandolin, is cutting our potatoes, our sweet potatoes, in half and then just slicing them. Just be careful for your fingers. It's very dangerous. So now that we're done slicing all of our sweet potatoes and potatoes in thin slices, 
We're going to put them in a water bath just to blanch them for a little while to wash off all of our excess starch. So we're going to let these hang out in their water baths for about an hour. The pan is heating up right now, so what we're going to do is fill our pan with a fry basket inside to about halfway so we have enough room to cook our chips. So the pot's going to take 10 to 15 minutes to heat up all the oil because there is a lot of oil in there, so be patient. Also, if you don't have a fry basket and you have a fry catch, like a spider net, that would be awesome too. So don't think that you have to have this exact equipment. As long as you can get that out of there without taking too much oil with it, you're good. Our oil is at temp. And a good way to figure this out is by taking a half a chip and dipping it inside the oil and if it starts sizzling and cooking, you know it's about ready to go. So we're going to slide each one of our chips in one at a time. We're going to give them a good push around just to make sure that they're not sticking together. While the chips are cooking, you're going to want to get a place for them to chill out after they're done. And you're going to want either a paper bag or a bunch of paper towels folded over each other so they can take all the extra grease. The chips are turning golden brown, which means they're almost done. Kind of shake off as much excess grease as you can, but be very careful because you don't want to start a fire. That would be very bad. All right, now we'll pour them out on our sheet. All right, so we have the, all the chips at an even layer, and we're just going to hit them with a little bit of salt for that extra flavor. All right, now while these cool and drain, we're going to put in our sweet potato batch. Same thing as last time, one at a time. Our sweet potatoes are done. They're golden brown and curling, so we're going to take them out from the hot oil. Oops. Do the same thing that we did with our chips. Pretty good.